So first I want to say for people not to panic. As people become aware of what's going on, that there's more going on, that we can't just turn our heads away and think it's going to just go away, don't panic. That's what this system wants you to do or it wants people to get violent. People cannot at any cost get violent, no matter what. The only time you can get violent is if somebody's breaking in your home and you're defending your, yourself and your family. It's truly important, no matter how angry people get about the traitors of our country. I had read an article yesterday and I, it had me almost just sobbing because of all of these Americans that are these CEOs, these corporations that have betrayed this country, all for their wealth. I, they've gotten in bed with the Communist Party and for millennials, they, they may not quite understand how absolutely dangerous that is and um, how it is a betrayal in this country. And um, everybody that thinks that the president of the United States right now has control over these corporations, he'll take the hit for it. But ultimately, these corporations have been working on their own. They are, they don't care that they betrayed the country. That was what had me almost sobbing, was that people that are Americans just didn't care about America. They took for granted, like your hospital CEOs have been so consumed with their own power, wealth, and control that they, they, ha they don't care at all about this country. Like that just, I don't know, that baffled me, it shocked me because I, I obviously learned the, the true greatness of America, being that I'm older and I'm not in the millennial generation and, and for the poor millennials that were taught that, you know, these horrible things about America that weren't in true or weren't taught, maybe some of it was true because we do have a past. We're just like we learn as we grow up um, or a country that we at least try to fix our mistakes, but we don't fix them when we have people and leaders in place that want to continue to keep those problems going. And that's what we've had, I would say, since I, I was born. Um, so it, it, it's very upsetting. It can make people very angry that um, there's these American, Americans in this country that um, they are trying to take down this America. And they're going to lose. I, that's why I say don't panic because when, there's, when you see wickedness, you should realize that there's an opposite to that because the one thing that even science would say is that everything has an opposite up, down, left, right, hot, cold, right, wrong. Um, it, it, everything has an opposite, good, bad. Um, so when you see things that strike you as evil or wicked, realize there's an opposite to that and it's a higher power. There's a reason that I bring in the Bible and the spirituality part of this because it, it all ties together. It's all part of it. Ultimately, it is about that. And even if these CEOs don't realize they are wicked people, they have, they've, they're displaying and have been displaying wicked behavior, not putting people first, putting profit before people. No hospital should be doing that. But we have businessmen, CEOs that are doing that right now and have been for a long time. If you really want to know how good a, com how good a company or hospital is, Find out what the staff thinks. Are they stressed? Are they, is their staffing cut so short that they are stressed, have no time to spend with patients? Are they um, in a bad mood? These are all, are, are their supplies low? These are all ways you can tell that no matter how big that university hospital name is, they're garbage if their staff is left in, you know, dire straits in just horrible conditions. 
So they stand on their name while at the same time destroying their employees and their staffing and, and the patient bedside care. So moving on. Um, I had brought up in another video that um, the former hospital I worked at, the downtown Chicago, Northwestern Medicine, that they had done two double lung transplants during the height of COVID, which everything, you know, struck me as that, that how, why, what, what, why would they do that? This virus, we were told, is so contagious and you're going to, we don't know anything about it, everybody said. You opened people up, people that were, um, had this virus, were on vents and you got consents and you got the organs and you got the whole transplant team together and you did them at the height of COVID during a worldwide lockdown. I know I've said this before, but there's a point. Maybe it's because they've always been doing some shady things. 2002, Northwestern Memorial Hospital under investigation. I'm sure they got out of this, but the federal government is investigating Northwestern Memorial Hospital and two other Chicago area facilities, charging that the hospitals had patients in need of liver transplants and they listed them as more sick than they actually were in order to obtain organ donations. According to the documents filed by the U.S. Attorney's Office, the Chicago Sun-Times reporter Monday, investigators are looking into whether false claims from Northwestern Memorial, University of Illinois at Chicago Medical Center, and the University of Chicago hospitals were submitted to the federal government. The government reportedly wants to determine if the three facilities listed patients as being in intensive care units when they weren't sick enough to be there. And if Medicare and Medicaid were billed for the medical procedures. If proven true, the allegations could result in civil or criminal penalties. The hospital said any questions about their transplant practices were resolved in the late 1990s, which means there were questions even way back then. Um, let me, uh, I'll repeat. The hospitals said any questions about their transplant practices were resolved in the late 1990s and that their programs are being run properly. So, it says here the federal prosecutor filed a request for the enforcement of a subpoena issued by the Department of Health and Human Services calling for records of audits dating back to 1995 by the United Network for Organs Sharing which allocates organs through a government contract. Court documents show the network gave minor discipline to the hospitals in the late 1990s in some of the cases cited in the audits, according to the article, but hospital officials at UIC said the issues had been resolved. Clearly they haven't, they haven't been. But I don't, I don't know what the result of this was. I'm sure they got off. I mean, it's Chicago, for God's sake. I, you know, I mean, it's the mob. The mob, just plain politicians and hospital CEOs. Um, I talked in my another video about, uh, recently about synthetic biology. Well, this same hospital, they have a huge lab downtown. So while they completely treat their employees and keep their workplaces toxic, especially in the rural communities and treat their nurses horribly bad um, and cut staff and everything, they like to prop themselves up as this big elite scientific organization because um, they have their big, big, huge lab building downtown that they've spent you know, six digit numbers on building. I mean, that's what these people, I mean, really, yeah, psychopathic. That they could, would, they absolutely aren't for doing this. 
So this is the problem with this lack of moral competence because at this big lab downtown, um, you know, while, again, too, this is while they carry on about their budgets, but their lab, they certainly had plenty of money for this big lab and doing all of these things. Northwestern medicine is in the thick of, I think, very corrupt things, more corrupt than I even thought. So, um, synthetic biology, I already explained in my other video, but this is defining the field. The idea that you can move beyond programming DNA information toward this space of building and controlling atoms and living matter is really what synthetic biology is all about. It's exciting, and over the past decade, I think experts in the field have really made remarkable advances in being able to create, control, and reprogram cellular behavior to do new things. Now on the surface, this may sound like great, this is great science, but not when you have the people that are heading up your science and the people, these hospital universities that are have been for decades doing things illegally. That, 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 then this stuff is not good. Um, it also says a research priority on both a national and international level that the synthetic biology is. Synthetic biology is well positioned to permanently transform society. Who the hell do these people think they are? I'm, you're not going to get a say in any of this. This is just how it is. This is all part of the Great Reset, by the way. It's what it's called. Um, so, also it says, epigenetics is the next great frontier of scientific discovery. I, I, I tend to think epigenetics is a lot like eugenics. We're just changing names. Remember I said in another video that um, psychopathic type people, they, they like to uh, play word games. They do. They, it's, it, I don't understand it. It's just, it's one of the things that goes along with the behavior. Um, Northwestern investigators have repeatedly pushed the boundaries of what is known about epigenetics, including discoveries in transcriptional regulation and gene expression, critical insights into its influence on disease like diffuse intrinsic protein gliome. I, I don't even know what that means. I won't read it. Um, so basically, they want to play God, obviously. It also says here, quote, I want people who are going to define the future of synthetic bi biology because we're going to transform how it contributes to the bioeconomy that's impacting our society and changing the way we interact with the living world. I, you know, the, the arrogance, the, just the absolute arrogance. So all you rural hospitals, you know, that merged and became Northwestern Medicine, all the nurses and, and the staff that get so screwed over with the staffing shortages and all you hear about is budget, budget, budgets, and you know, the, not having the supplies you need. Just realize they, that's because they spend all their money on this crap because they want to dictate and change the world to something that's sick because when you have, people that are more focused on money than human beings that do this stuff, don't think there'll be a good outcome from it. That said, they are not in control and that is the one blessing in all of this. I wouldn't get on and do any of these videos if I didn't know 100% that these people will fail and they will never see that. You know why? Because the Bible talks about God placing a delusion on those that don't that don't walk in a humane way basically people that do things that are wicked they are a delusion is placed on them and i would say that what that delusion is it's a delusion of their ego and their pride 
their money, those dollar signs, power and control. That's the delusion that keeps them from seeing what people that walk or try to do the best they can to walk in a righteous path can see that do have a connection to God know that the CEO of Northwestern, Northwestern Medicine, Northwestern University will fall because it needs to. And that shouldn't scare people. What should scare people is if these people were going to be successful and they won't. I told my manager at Northwestern when I was still there well over a year ago, I said, it, this is gonna fall, it can't maintain itself. How would I have known that? I knew it because I can take the fact that I believe in God and look at things from a common sense standpoint and see that having destructive people like these CEOs controlling the hospital that only have dollar signs for them in their eyes, that they are dangerous and that they will cause things to fall. That's common sense and the spiritual end. When you have both of those, you can figure it out. And that was a year it was a year and a half ago at least that I told her that that it will fall and people probably don't think it will it will it's, they want part of this system part of the great reset is they want everything to fall they want it because then you're going to beg for somebody to come and fix it no you don't want anybody any of these people they then, then the elites will come in remember I said early on they create the crisis then come in like they're heroes that's what they want they're going to create all this crisis, all these systems to fall. That's why your stores don't, are, you know, you're seeing them more and more empty. Um, they want all that to happen because then the people will beg for somebody to come in and fix it. Don't beg the government to come in and fix anything because they don't fix anything. They cannot fix a thing. All they do is fix, literally fix things like elections to their advantage. They're corrupt, they're, they're corrupt, they're crooks, they're criminals. It's no different than a mafia on a global scale. That's what it is. You, me, we the people in our communities, we will be the ones that will fix it and restore it. Don't panic, these people will lose. And I know now more than ever, the Bible is real, even though I knew it before, because it's obvious the delusion that God placed on these people.